Hello and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Join us here at each show where we visit RV products and services and RV tips, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So relax, grab a cup of coffee, let's talk about RVs. Well, hello RVers and welcome to episode 12 of RV Talk Radio. Today is a pretty exciting day because we are going to tell you how you can win an RV lock, a remote keyless entry system for your RV. Sherry and I just got our remote keyless entry system installed on our fifth wheel just a couple of days ago and we did a video about it and we love it. Oh my gosh. Um, I think the big thing that I liked the most was I know that the keys used on RVs are not unique and I've heard that you can actually open up other RVs with your own keys so you know you got a lot of personal things in your RV and especially if you're full-time like computers and money and electronics and the most important thing is my wife so having the bolt system, um, first of all, is nice to have. Two is <clears throat> it's very secure, and it makes me sleep at night <laughs> knowing that we have a much better security system on our RV. So I truly hope uh, today uh, when we tell you how to put your name in for the drawing, which I will give you instructions in a couple of minutes. So uh, today's show, I want to kind of stay with the theme of security and safety. And that goes right along with these RV locks. The other thing I want to tell you about is what I went through this week from making a big mistake that everybody's been telling you not to do in your RV. And that's use two-ply or three-ply or quilted northern toilet paper or any kind of toilet paper that normally you would use in your house in an RV it is critical that you use a toilet paper that dissolves quickly and breaks up completely so I've got to confess I wasn't practicing with a uh, what I've been preaching so we uh, Pretty much just using anything that we bought at the grocery store and guess what I'm starting to have some trouble with closing one of my valves because I know that we have toilet paper not dissolving so I've been flushing and flushing and flushing the tank out and I get a little bit more out every time but um, I know I still don't have it all out so I ended up going out and I bought a reverse RV flush valve which I bought at Camping World and once again I made a video of what I did anyway so what this does is you put it into your septic hose and it has a valve and then you put water into it so what it does is it forces water the opposite direction up into your uh, septic hose and pushes the water into the tank which in a sense is kind of like swish wash back and forth to help break up some of that paper and I've got to tell you that thing works great it's not hard to install they are a little pricey I paid over $25 for that it's not much but it's uh, it seems to be worth $25 I guess but anyway once I got it installed uh, once again, we have a video on RV Travel Buddy that shows you how it works. You start flushing the water up there and then uh, sh shut it off, pull the lever, and the water starts w uh, working its way back through uh, from the tank that you just pumped in. And by gosh, if it didn't start chopping up some of that paper. So just because I did it once or twice doesn't mean I got it all. So I've been, re you know, I, don't, I have, we're going to be at this location for a while. So every day I do a back flush and a front flush <laughs> and a sideways flush everything I do and every time I get more and more paper out of there so 
Uh, lesson learned, please use dissolvable toilet paper in your tank. You will pay the consequences if you don't. And make sure you use a, a deodorizer and a dissolvent type of chemical too to help break it down also. Um, the best advice I've ever heard about septic is one is using the right kind of paper and two keep it moist keep water in there use lots of water when you flush use lots of water have tons of water in your tank always never let anything dry up or um, or mount up in the tank so water 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 and use the right toilet paper so now to change the subject back to security I had a friend of mine they're a couple a retired couple and they were on their way to Las Vegas and they stopped at Hawthorne between Reno and Las Vegas Hawthorne is a kind of a barren little town but it's a, um, a military town also and he I think went into the casino either to go play or go do something and they were parked out in their parking lot and she's just working away doing dishes or something in the RV and some person opened their door took a few steps in and felt necessary to ask her questions about something about their RV which scared the living you know what out of her and she like uh, yeah, 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 yeah. and he left and shut the door and they were definitely freaked out. So, <coughs> I guess the, the moral of the story is, <laughs> doesn't mean you, we need to be carrying a gun or anything like that, but getting in the habit of locking our doors whenever either a single person's in there alone or you're both in there or you're not in the RV at all, that's what I like so much about the RV lock keyless entry. There is no reason not to lock your door because you walk through hit your remote thing goes bloop and it locks it and you're done deal um, if you're going out the door there's no excuse not to lock that door even if your wife or your husband's still in the unit no one's gonna get locked in and no one's gonna get locked out because there's no no way you're gonna get locked out of your rig you don't need a key so uh, that's a real story and that really did happen so with the RV lock system get in the habit of just locking your doors so I guess with that note I guess it's time to tell you how you can put your name in for a free RV lock keyless remote system first of all you'll need to go to the description of this episode and you will see a link to the Facebook page of RV locks the next thing you're going to want to do is click on that link go to their Facebook and open up a comment and say I would like to be in the RV lock drawing from RV talk radio and you must refer to RV talk radio you do not need to leave a phone number and you do not leave, need to leave an address but you should have a Facebook account if you don't have a Facebook account do it through somebody else's that you know what will happen then is they will take your comment and assign you a number and we're gonna let this contest or drawing go for about five days so by next week we'll announce who the winner is what they will use is a random number generator that will choose who wins the free RV lock system. So it can't be more fair than that. You could be the first person, you could be the last person. You will have a chance to win the RV lock system. So once again, you'll click on the link for RV locks Facebook page go to their Facebook page and you also we need you to like the page so like the page and in the comments say I would like to be in the RV lock drawing from RV talk radio and just post it and you're in the drawing 
So now that you know how to go get your free RV lock, I want to remind you that we're going to do this contest once a month. So yes, you will have another chance. If you don't win this time, you will get another chance to get an RV lock. So it's worth it, I tell you. The other thing I want to let you know is if you'd like to get your RV lock now and you don't want to count on winning one, if you want to get a significant savings, and we're talking a good savings, go to the link we have in the description below and go to RV Travel Buddy on our review page, click on their link and put in our code and you will save, I believe, about $54.99 off the retail price. It is a great savings. And I'm telling you, it's worth every penny. If someone is to get into your rig, can you imagine how much money you would lose? If someone got hurt or your wife or your husband was in an uh, RV alone and someone broke in, is it worth it? And I'll tell you, it's worth every penny. So, once again, the link is on our description. You go to RV Travel Buddy, the product reviews, and click on the link to the site of RV Locks. Use our code, and you will save a lot of money. So, I hope that's helpful to you. So, uh, now that it's fall, at least when, you're listen when we're doing this show, this would be a good time to do your fall cleaning. <laughs> Not spring cleaning, fall cleaning. And the way I describe that is, this is a good time to one, check all your systems, because all of us are starting to think about winter now. So we're going to have to start winterizing some of our equipment. But this is the time to check all your batteries. Check your batteries in flashlights. Check batteries in clocks. Especially check your batteries in your smoke alarms and make sure all your systems or safety systems are working. Uh, if you've got an older system and you've got sniffer systems that are kind of getting old, you might want to think about taking a trip over the camping world or someplace like that and replacing your carbon monoxide testers, anything, smoke alarms, anything that's getting kind of old. I know it's such a pain in the rear, but you know, if you do it and get it done, that your self-satisfaction will be high. And two, you'll sleep just a little bit better knowing that if you had a gas leak or a fire, um, you, you know you did something about it. The other thing that's really important to do this time of year, and I, I just, uh, I guess, don't fall behind on things. I guess is the way we're going to make a theme for this in fall. Don't fall behind in things. So let's also check or add to your fire extinguishers. Uh, if they're getting kind of old, uh, it's probably getting time to replace them. If you only have one that came with the system or came with the, the rig you have, I would suggest maybe getting two more. One for the living room area, let's say, or, the, or close to the kitchen area. And it wouldn't hurt to have one up in the bedroom area just for that peace of mind it's not going to set you back that much and I don't know it, it's another thing will just help you sleep better also have you and your wife or partner that you have in your RV ever discussed like where the safety windows or emergency windows are that you need to escape out of the, out of the rig and then the other thing is if your rig's really high off the ground, like a fifth wheel, and your escape window's up there a ways, and you're getting up there in age, maybe you need to put a ladder or keep something uh, in the closet that'll help make it easier to get out of that window and not injure yourself while you're trying to escape from a fire. So, like I said, this is going to be kind of a safety and, and security theme uh, show today, and I apologize if it sounds a little bit uh, boring, but... If you did all that stuff and you had an emergency, I really hope that you guys would call me up and, or send me an email saying thank you. I know that it's uh, not a fun subject to talk about, but safety and security, if one of those are violated, it really will spoil your day. Another subject for 
security is I'll touch on and I'll mention it but that's all I'm gonna do is whether it's a good idea to have a gun or not I'm kind of back and forth about that but I want to tell you that if you get a chance go to rvtravel.com and they did a video about gun, <laughs> gun ownership and also what it requires to go from state to state to have a gun permit. So I'm not telling you one way or the other whether a gun is a good idea or not. Um, I'm not against them. I'm, I'll tell you that. I'm not against guns at all. Um, but I'm also pro-safety. Not everybody should have a gun either because not everybody's safe enough or responsible enough to have one. So all I can say is you get a chance to go to rvtravel.com. He did a very good video about um, owning a gun and also having the permits to go from one state to another. So uh, that might help you out. Another great tool you might want to consider I think is better than a gun, but is a security system itself. And they come in all shapes and sizes. And really, if you go to Amazon.com and do some searches on security systems, that is a good way to kind of figure out what kind of system you want. But if you have internet access, and if you got good internet in, in some places, you can do some very innovative things to help protect your rig and to get you evidence of who might have broke in if they did because a lot of these systems are webcams that tie into the internet that you can monitor from your phone and you can get some with alarms and things like that too and also alarms that would con you know send you a message on your phone you could take a look and see what you see and I believe you can even disarm your alarm system from a distance from your phone on some of these units. So, you know, that's another thing to consider for security is getting a uh, webcam system and then maybe getting some stickers or something to put on the outside of the rig to uh, hopefully be a deterrent. So there's a great idea for you. It's going to cost you a little bit of money. Once again, is it worth it uh, losing that $600,000 laptop that's sitting on your counter or some electronics um, or stealing money or stealing uh, some other equipment out of your rig? Is it worth uh, two, three, four hundred dollars $400? I would have to say yes. And maybe the last suggestion I might give you is <clears throat> if you want some kind of weapon or deterrent other than a gun, I've heard a couple of things like uh, pepper spray, of course, but <laughs> if you want something that's right over the counter and easy to get a hold of, I heard that uh, wasp spray for bees, wasp spray, is what, which is designed to, to, to spray at a distance, works really good just like pepper spray. Now, I'm not, don't quote me on this totally, but I hear and you might want to do some research on the internet but I hear that can work pretty good so if you don't want something that's maybe deadly or poisonous or or could go off in your rig you wouldn't want pepper spray going off in your rig um, check into that I think that was a, it's a something that's right under the counter and if you get a stranger at the door and you want something to kind of hold on to at the door when you open it get yourself some wasp spray <laughs> that'll take them out <laughs> at least slow them down or really take them off I don't know but I hear it works another subject that comes to mind for me and Sherry is our pets and our pets safety and security for them too so Sherry and I work so a lot of times we leave them in the RV there's something to consider and I've heard this to be a problem is you might want to get in a habit when you leave to shut off the gas to your RV and make sure the pilot lights off in your oven the reason being and it's not so much with the smaller dogs but we have a chocolate lab as you guys know 
<clears throat> and uh, they can, if for some reason they jump up on the counter or, or jump, just put their paws up on the counter or by the stove, they are capable of turning those knobs on the stove. And you know what that does, it's just going to turn on gas and it's going to asphyxiate your animals. Not to mention possibly blow up everything. So, yes, I mean, when you turn the knobs, there is a slight locking mechanism there. But I heard that pets could possibly turn those on. And uh, I know it's kind of a pain. And it's not that hard, though, just to go and turn the knobs on your on your rig. Unless you're concer uh, concerned about heating. Um, I would just make sure that you're making sure those knobs are in a locked position if you're not going to shut off your gas. And please don't leave anything around the stove that would cause your large dog to want to get up on their paws and take a look. Um, my dog, Cinder, uh, she's got a really good nose and if some reason we left butter or something up there by the stove, she would probably jump up and want to get a you know, get, <laughs> get a good taste of it. Anyway, so the other thing I, uh, I was talking about webcams the other day. We actually keep a webcam in our RV on or available to turn on from our cell phones to check on our animals when we're at work. Um, I think you can get a pretty decent one, a webcam from. Um, I think it's I can't remember the company we bought it from <clears throat> but anyway um, the one we have we can just tap into our phone take a look and see how the animals are doing and it's live and then we can actually turn on the sound we can hear if the dogs are barking or cats me on and we are also able to send our voice across there so if they're barking I can say send or stop or or um well, I can't really get the cat to do anything, even if I did talk to her. But it is a nice little feature we have for the RV, and we can talk to Cinder when we're gone. So, once again, that's another thing to consider for your pets, is the safety as far as gas. And some reason you have an animal that's under stress, barking for some reason, you can talk to them, or it will tell you it's a good idea to run home because something's wrong. So with all the suggestions we're giving you, I guess it's also safe to think about maybe since we're getting close to winter to start protecting your RV. And I kind of say this more for safety and damage too, but this is the time or maybe between now and the next month or so to start investing in items to insulate your water. Um, to get heating coils if you need to, uh, wrap your pipes. Um, make sure that if you're not using your RV uh, full time to uh, go ahead and uh, if you think you're done using it or maybe uh, you're just finishing up hunting season and you're not going to use your RV in a while, start winterizing your system and, and, and don't be a conservative. Go overboard. It's worth it because uh, I have at one time when my very first trailer I had um, the plastic pipes in there before the, I started using nylon cord pipe type and uh, I thought I winterized good pretty good but I didn't and I ended up uh, having to repair plumbing on a camping trip and it wasn't much fun because I had to tear out a bathtub and everything to get to the to the pipes and everything but uh, uh, that was a lesson learned many many years ago so for uh, at least for protecting your rig it's getting time to start thinking about things getting cold if you need to get a heater or a dryer or whatever you needs get it now or start buying it now so it doesn't hurt your wallet so much and protect that RV of yours it's worth it and one more thing before I uh, kinda wrap up on safety and security is start making yourself a checklist for when you tow your trailer or, or pull your motorhome out. Um, I want to tell you about an app 
that's available on your cell phone and it's free for download it's called RV checklist if you're terrible at making your own checklist then and you have a smartphone download this little application it's easy to use and it if it helps keep you from damaging your RV then it's worth it and it's free otherwise um, you and your partner or if you're by yourself uh, start creating a checklist and make it available and easy to, to get to anytime you're getting ready to break down and move to a new location um, and, and maybe even a checklist before you hook or unhook your your rig if you're towing uh, I don't know how many times that you may have done it hundreds of times before and you may forget to put down the antenna or you might forget to plug something in or you didn't check your lights it just goes on and on and on so I know not everybody likes to do the checklists but I'm telling you it's just that new process that new changing your paradigms about safety and security the make the changes aren't that hard it's just getting used to just going through the process it sure beats damaging your rig <laughs> um, and it happens so fast uh, I've been very lucky I haven't really done anything really bad but I've seen other folks drive off and forget to pull the, the lock on their fifth wheel and the whole fifth wheel falls on the back of their truck and the damages are just amazingly terrible <laughs> so um, I don't I just uh, I can't emphasize enough the checklist that helps you go through your procedures because there's so much to remember so many things that could go wrong that that could be prevented so make a checklist or download that free app called RV checklist I'm telling you it's worth it so that's all I'm gonna say about safety and security today uh, I know it gets kinda old and kinda boring but boy if just one of you per one person or one of our listeners listened to us and, and, and prevented something from happening then we've been successful so on another note I mentioned to you guys that you know we have Cinder the chocolate lab and I know I got a weird sense of humor but from Amazon I ordered <laughs> well you know Cinder's a chocolate lab so I ordered some chocolate shampoo some reason I just it must be my sense of humor but I thought it'd be funny to have a chocolate lab a real chocolate lab that smells like chocolate so I bought this shampoo, came in the mail, and I grabbed a dog, and she's great. For, she loves to get a bath. <coughs> and so I started using this chocolate shampoo, and I got to tell you, it made the bathroom or the tub that she smelled great. It smelled like chocolate cake in the whole RV. I'm telling you, there was, uh, I mean, it smelled good. <laughs> so... And the problem is the dog, I think, realized it smelled pretty good, too, because she wanted to keep eating the, the bubbles and stuff. So um, so the problem with chocolate shampoo is your dog wants to eat the chocolate shampoo. But once we get it all done, uh, a wet chocolate lab with chocolate shampoo doesn't really smell that good. But once, <laughs> once she dried out, she smelled great oh my gosh I mean she smelled like chocolate it smelled great so <laughs> it's funny I took her to the pet store over here because we had trying to get her some new dry food and uh, I think it was called pet pros and I everybody's like oh a chocolate lab and everybody's and I said yeah now she's a chocolate lab she smells like chocolate oh my god I had everybody in the store hugging the dog and sniffing her and it was like well I mean uh for a dog, I guess getting sniffed is probably, <laughs> you know, I, uh, pretty normal. So anyway, it was kind of funny. But um, the only thing I noticed is uh, every time we go for walks or go down trails and stuff, we seem to get followed by baby bunnies. Don't know what that is all about. But anyway, so if you got a chocolate lab, uh, try some chocolate shampoo. It's it's kind of fun. So that's my that's my weird story. So at this at this point of the show, I want to remind you folks, we'd sure like to hear from you. 
Uh, we'd love to have any questions. Uh, you can use our Facebook if you like. Uh, just go to RV Travel Buddies Facebook, and if we see some good questions or some things you want us to do some research on, uh, we'll certainly use it. And uh, if you want to contact us directly, go to our website at rvtalkradio.com and go to the contact page, and you can uh, uh, tell us what's on your mind there. And we'd love your feedback, too. And you can also uh, email me directly at rob, R-O-B, at rvtalkradio.com and just shoot me an email and if you have questions or feedback or uh, something you like uh, uh, or if you even have a, a story you want to share with us we'd be happy to get you on there and if you'd like to be interviewed for a product or a service that's RV related we would certainly uh, be uh, uh, inclined to do that also uh, you just got to get a hold of us our phone number uh, which we uh, uh, have available is right now only taking messages and uh, that number is 541-548-0958. Uh, I suggest not using that right now because we don't have, uh, we, it's a Vonage line, we don't have it connected uh, at the RV right now because the internet we have is kind of weak. <clears throat> but it will be effective soon. But the other ways I told you to contact us, you can get us uh, through uh, Facebook is a great way to get on there. Look for RV. Um, just go to RV Travel Buddy. Uh, go to our Facebook and if you let us uh, let us know what's going on, we appreciate it. So I really hope I'm gonna have a kind of a shorter show today. And next week we get some interviews coming up. I want to thank everybody for the great feedback we have had. I hope we've been helpful. Uh, we're kind of limited on setting up our studio the way we want to um, we're getting ready to move and head south so we're kind of hesitant about setting up all the equipment so we're kind of making do with what we have uh, we uh, love to have you take the time to go watch any of our videos a lot of things we talk about here you can also see the video and if you have some ideas and feedback please get it back to us and I want to take the time to thank you very much for watching or listening to RV Talk Radio. And everybody have a great week. Until next week, we'll announce who the winners are for the drawing. And be safe, be secure, and happy RVing, everybody. Bye now. <laughs>